Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, oh. teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good to see you. Good to see you, evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. So we are almost, almost, almost done with the. Uh, we are almost at the end. Uh, we just have a couple of a uh, sessions. Uh, we have this and. Tomorrow we are going to complete the um, the whole course, so we are almost at the end. Uh, it is something very good that we have completed this uh, time and also this information. Uh, we are going to continue with the things that we have for today, uh, and also we are going to complete the different uh, knowledge that we have left because we are going to complete the whole thing uh, tomorrow because we are going to focus also on the final exam tomorrow. So we're, um, we can say that we are waiting for the others to complete the, um, the group. I know that there are some people that is not going to to be here today because I think they have something to do because I know that uh, in some cases we cannot attend the, the meetings, but we are going to try to uh, complete the information that we have for this session. Um, so yesterday we were like talking about uh, structures or grammatical structures. Um, that we use in English. Um, in this case, we were talking about the present uh, perfect. Oh, that was my, my camera. Um, and we're going to continue with uh, the other information that we have for today. But in this case, let me go to the platform. We are going to check something on the platform. And then we are going to continue with the things that we are going to do this day but it is charging, so give me a second. Okay. Okay. Okay, we completed the knowledge check 5.4, and today we are going to um talk about a little bit about the present perfect and simple past so in this case we're just going to make like um like a discussion about the uses of the simple past and we are going to um like make the difference or we're going to point what are the difference between the present perfect and the simple past when we are talking about different situations in our daily life. Because you know that in this case, we were talking about that uh, when we are using the present perfect, we are talking about some uh, activities that we perform on the past and have like uh, part in the present or are going to be completed in the present or are happening in this moment too. But in the case of the simple past, you know that um, in that structure, in that specific grammatical structure, in that tense, you are talking about activities that you completed in the past. But also we are going to see some details about the uh, simple uh, past that we can use in some cases um, to express different ideas. But we are going to begin listening to uh, a conversation and then we are going to like make a review because in this case it's making a review about the, uh, the simple past because this one is a topic that we see a lot and we can see this topic at the beginning of the courses. But in this case, we're just going to make a review to remember the information that we know about the simple past. Así que vamos a escuchar esta conversación eh, 
que tiene que ver, ¿verdad?, con el uso del presente eh, a perfecto, ¿verdad?, en este caso es el, el presente perfecto, que el que ya estábamos eh, trabajando estas dos sesiones atrás. Y también vamos a hacer un review o un análisis un poco, um, no tan extenso, va a ser algo corto de lo que es el, sim, el, pre, el pasado simple, de cómo funciona esto, estas dos estructuras, ¿verdad? Y también porque necesitamos hacer como un análisis de las situaciones, ¿verdad? Del presente perfecto versus el simple past de cómo los podemos utilizar, que también vamos a ver ese video, ¿verdad? Del present perfect versus simple past. Pero primero escuchamos la conversación, luego hablamos un poco del simple past y después vemos el video de el eh, present perfect versus simple past. So let me show you the video in which we are going to listen a conversation related to this topic And then we are going to explain something about the simple past. So let's pay attention. Hi everyone, a conversation will be listened to in order to practice present perfect and simple past at the same time. Notice how they use both tenses during this conversation. Listen and repeat. Listen and practice. I'm sorry I'm late. Have you been here long? No, only for a few minutes. Have you chosen a restaurant yet? I can't decide. Have you ever eaten Moroccan food? No, I haven't. Is it good? It's delicious. I've had it several times. Or how about Thai food? Have you ever had green curry? Actually, I have. I lived in Thailand as a teenager. I ate it a lot there. I didn't know that. How long did you live there? I lived there for two years. Side. Okay, we have here the conversation. And we're going to like divide the, this information because at the beginning of the video, it says that we need to, to understand the use of the present uh, perfect and also the simple past in the same conversation. How can we uh, combine that information when we are talking in English in this case? Because when we are talking in Spanish, it's like very um, natural and we are not like, uh, thinking very much about the, the tenses that we're using in Spanish, because we are like uh, familiar with that information. En el caso del inglés, como estamos aprendiendo inglés, sí tenemos que ser muy conscientes de las estructuras que utilizamos. En el español, pues como es nuestro idioma nativo, ya no, no ponemos atención tanto a esa parte cuando contamos algo. Eh, por ejemplo, nosotros podemos estar platicando con alguien y decirle, yo fui al supermercado con mi familia y compramos eh, a diferentes cosas, habían huevos, alguna vez has ido al supermercado de noche y podemos combinar diferentes eh, tiempos, diferentes estructuras en español. But in English, it's kind of different because we are learning something. When we are like very familiar with the language and you are not thinking about the message that you want to give or you are not paying attention to uh, the whole information and how to change from one thing to another, you are going to be that fluent with the ideas. But in this, uh, in this case, in this step, you need to be very focused on the different structures that you are using in English. So in this case, we have these uh, phrases. I'm sorry, I'm late. Have you been here long? Have you been here long? That one is a present perfect structure. Esa pregunta está utilizando el presente perfecto. Have you been? Ahí es donde nosotros vamos viendo los detalles que ya les mostraba yo en la información de las dos sesiones anteriores. ¿Cuáles eran los elementos que teníamos que enfocarnos nosotros? Primero, el uso del auxiliar, have or has. 
y luego el verbo que esté en pasado participio. Have you been here long? No, only for a few, a few minutes. Have you chosen a restaurant yet? Have you chosen a restaurant yet? Another present perfect structure. Have you chosen a restaurant? And also we are using yet. Aquí usamos tres cosas, ¿verdad? Que ya estuvimos viendo ayer. Have, chosen, and yet. Al final de la oración. I can't decide. Have you ever eaten Moroccan food? Have you ever eaten Moroccan food? Otra estructura que tiene que ver con el presente perfecto. No, I haven't. Is it good? It's delicious. I have had it several times. I had it several times. En este caso estamos hablando de la, um, de la forma corta de decir I have had it several times. Oh, how about Thai food? Have you ever had green curry? Have you ever had green curry? Otra estructura, ¿verdad? Actually, I have. I live in Thailand as a teenager. I ate it a lot there. Aquí. Esta, toda esta estructura es pasado simple. I live. I live in Thailand as a teenager. I ate it a lot there. Ahí solo estamos utilizando el pasado, ¿verdad? La forma pasada de estos dos verbos. Uno es un verbo regular y el otro es un verbo irregular. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Pasado simple. How long did you live there? How long did you live there? Another simple past tense. I lived there for two years. Aquí tenemos la combinación de dos estructuras, el presente perfecto y el pasado simple. No las estamos uniendo como tal en una sola oración, sino que a través de la conversación vamos incluyendo estos detalles de el presente perfecto y el pasado simple. Now, we are going to make a short review. Vamos a tratar de hacer un um, recordatorio breve de algunos elementos que tengan que ver con el pasado simple. But give me a moment. I'm looking for your document in which we have the information. In this case, we're just going to see like very uh, specific points related to the information. In this case, we're just uh, going to talk about uh, some structures, the uses, and some information that we need to, to know about the the tense. I'm going to put here the document, okay. So in this case, vamos a poner por acá, review. Simple past. Okay, in this case, when we're talking about this structure, eh, we're saying that the simple past tense shows that you are talking about something that has already happened. That is the main thing. Um, what you are talking about the past, uh, pa uh, in this case, the present perfect, you are talking about activities or actions that happened in the past, but they are not completed. No están completas. Empezaron en el pasado, en el tiempo pasado, pero no fueron completadas. A menos que estemos hablando de una que pusimos por acá. Eh, that is esta, la número dos. A series of the same action completed multiple times in the past, likely to happen again in the future. En esa, sí han pasado situaciones que se han completado en el pasado, pero la diferencia es que puede volver a suceder, o sea, no se ha terminado por completo, sino que puede volver a suceder. So in that case, it's not like we are going to use the structure of the simple past. En ese caso, vamos a utilizar la estructura correspondiente. Pero ahora, con el simple past, tenemos que ser conscientes que las acciones sí han sido completadas en el pasado. Eh, unlikely, the past continuous tense. 
which is used to talk about past events that happen over a period of time. En este caso también tenemos el pasado continuo, que nos está hablando de eventos pasados que sucedieron en un determinado periodo de tiempo. The simple past tense indicates that the action occurred at a certain time and then was completed. Nos explica que pasó en un tiempo determinado, pero que al final sí fue completado. So, just two points. Give me a second. Okay, so in this case, we were saying that um, distance shows that you are talking about something that has already happened. And also we have this one that is used to talk about past events that happen over a period of time. It indicates that the action occur at a certain Okay, it's very clear that we know that when we are talking about the past, uh, we are talking about this kind of uh, statements, that this kind of actions in which we are like very secure that the actions um, had end in a period of time. It, they were uh, they were completed in that specific time. So you can also use the simple past to talk about past state of being, such as the way someone feel about something. In this case, you are not just talking about a uh, actions. You are also talking about um we can say like how you feel about something. La diferencia o la cosa que tenemos que remarcar también acá con el pasado eh, simple es que no solo vamos a hablar de um, acciones que se realizaron en ese periodo de tiempo, sino que también vamos a hablar de cómo nos sentimos nosotros en ese momento cuando algo sucedió. Vamos a involucrar también los sentimientos en esta estructura. Simple past to talk about a past state of being, such as the way someone felt about something. This is often expressed with a simple past tense of the verb be. In this case, when you are talking about your feelings, about something related to the past or how you felt in that situation, you are just going to use the past form of the verb to be. 
Um, and also you can use some adjectives, some nouns or prepositional phrases to explain how you were like feeling in that moment. Um, for example, if you were like feeling uh, proud or something, you are going to say, I was proud of myself, of my performance or something like that. Or I, I was upset, I was sad, he was sad because he lost his key. All of the things you can use that expression. Now, how can we form this uh, simple past tense? Easy, they are very easy to understand how to use this one because we already talk about these uh, kind of verbs. In this case, you know that we have two different type of verbs, the irregular and the regular, and we need to search for the second part of the table in which we have the past, and that's it. In some cases, when you have this, uh, the regular verbs, you are just going to add ed at the end. And for the irregular one, you know that they are going to change the form in which you are writing. In that case, we're not going to talk about the different kind of verbs because we already talked about them. Um, in the case of negative, you know that we are going to use did not, did not to make a negative statement. In the case of making questions, you are going to use the auxiliary did plus the subject, plus the verb and the complement. And that is the information that we have. And it is like very, uh, we already know this information. So in this case, we are not going to uh, talk about a lot about this, uh, these verbs. So um, in this case, we have like a question. Can simple past tense express future actions? ¿Podemos utilizar el, el pasado simple para hablar de acciones futuras? In this case, mm, we can in some cases, pero no con el pasado simple. No podemos utilizar el pasado simple para hablar de acciones futuras porque ya sabemos que en ese momento se acabó. Se terminó. Ahí ya no hay oportunidad para continuar con esa actividad. Pero si hablamos del presente perfecto continuo, podríamos utilizar para hablar de eh, acciones que comienzan en el pasado y siguen sucediendo en el presente y pueden llegar a suceder en el futuro. Pero con el pasado simple no podemos hablar de cosas futuras o ni siquiera del presente. And that is like, like the review because uh, we already know a lot of information about the simple past. But in this case, it's just to make the, the, the difference between the present perfect and the simple past. Because in this case, you are just going to, to talk about situations in the past, um, activities that you have completed and also feelings. That is the two things that you need to, to remember actions that happened in the past and feelings, how you felt in that situation. And in the present perfect, you are talking about situation that happen or begin in the past and are continuing in the present or uh, are going, um, no. And they are going to be completed in some cases in the present or has to be with present time. Esa es como una de las diferencias más grandes, ¿verdad? El presente perfecto habla de situaciones que comenzaron en el pasado, que siguen continuando en el presente o tienen influencia en el presente y o se van a cumplir o se van a volver a repetir en el presente. El pasado simple solo habla de acciones que ya se completaron en el pasado y de sentimientos, de cómo nos sentimos nosotros acerca de una situación del pasado. And that's it. Now, we're going to see the video in which we're going to uh, see the present perfect versus the simple past. Este es solo para completar, ¿verdad? Esta parte y ya vamos con el knowledge check para completar también esa parte.
So let's watch the video here. Hello to all. In this lesson, we will learn when to use present perfect versus simple past. What we're about to watch is question form in present perfect. Notice the way to answer. Present perfect versus simple past. Use the present perfect for an indefinite time in the past. Use the simple past for a specific event in the past. Have you ever eaten Moroccan food? Yes, I have. I ate it once in Paris. No, I haven't. I've never eaten it. Have you ever had green curry? Yes, I have. I tried it several years ago. No, I haven't. I've never had it. Vent in the past. Okay, in this case, we have the description here. And it says that uh, we are going to use the present perfect for an indefinite time in the past. Aquí, otra cosa importante que eh, vemos en esta parte. Es un tiempo indefinido. No sabemos con exactitud cuándo sucedió, ¿verdad? Aquí no hay como que, ah, hace cinco meses o hace tres años o el 24 de julio de 1952. No, it is like an indefinite time in the past. And also it is not like very important to um, put that information into this kind of statement. And in the other um, structure is use the simple past for a specific event in the past. Eventos específicos en el pasado que incluso ahí sí podemos delimitar en qué momento del pasado fue que sucedió eh, esa acción, pero en el primero no es relevante, ¿verdad? El tiempo, simplemente que haya pasado en el pasado, ¿verdad? Que haya sido hace cinco o seis meses atrás. Now, we're going to see what is the activity that we are going to perform right now in the knowledge check 5.9. So, we have these ones, we have 10. And it says, complete these conversations, use the present perfect and simple past of the verb given. Vamos a utilizar, ¿verdad? El pasado simple o el presente perfecto del de verbo que se nos da ahí. Vamos a ver uno, dos y tres y vamos a eh, dar un par de minutos para que ustedes los lean, los analicen, vean cuál es la opción correcta. Luego me dan la respuesta, vamos con otros tres. Hasta, hasta terminar la actividad. So you have a couple of minutes to think about the answer. Then you are going to give me the answer for these three situations. So let's go.
Okay, let's see the answers. For number one, have sung, has sung, or have sung? The first. The first one. Okay, this one. The third. Number three. Number three. Ah, Number okay. Three. Okay, okay. Oh, let me take this one out. Number two. Have seen, uh, I mean, has seen, did sung, have sung. Number three. Number three. Yes. Okay. Number three. Okay. Number three. Have lost, has lost, have lose. Number one. Number one. Number one. Yes. Number one. Okay, number one. Let's see another three phrases. Vamos a ver otras tres. Four, five, and six. Okay, we have a couple of minutes to think about the, the answers and then we are going to answer. In a four, number two. Okay, in four, we have number two, you said. Five, number one. Okay. Six, number three. Okay, very good. Seven, going... mm -hmm. two, number two. Number two. Eight, number three. Okay. Nine, number one. 10, number two. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, we are going to check these answers to see if they are correct. So it said, we need to wait, okay. All of them are correct, very good. So in the number one, we have have and sung. Number two, have sang number three have lost number four haven't lost number five have golden number six have got number seven have seen number eight have saw number nine have been and number ten haven't was Okay, very good, perfect. So we're going to um, complete the next topic that is uh, like we are going to mark the difference from two words. You're going to see what are those words. We're going to make the difference between those words and how can we use them in English and in specific information and also we are going to see some examples of these, uh, uh, of the use of these words. And we are going to have, you can see here, we are going to uh, complete this knowledge check that we have here, that is the 5.12 with these uh, things tomorrow, I think. We are going to complete this last part tomorrow and also the exam. Así que mañana nos vamos a enfocar en el examen el examen final para completarlo. Si ustedes no lo han completado, no se preocupen, mañana es el día en el que lo vamos a completar. Así que mmm, ahí vamos a hacerlo juntos si no lo han hecho. Si ya lo hicieron, perfecto, muy bien. Pero si no, mañana es el día para hacerlo. So, vamos a pasar a este tema. Vamos a ver, vamos a, a iniciar con una pregunta, pero esta pregunta va para ustedes. Eh, pero déjenme poner la pantalla primero. Ok. Ok. This is the topic. Topic. Four. And. Things for time. Vamos a hablar del uso de for and since. Ahora, 
What is the uh, translation into Spanish of the word for and since? ¿Cuál es la traducción al español de la palabra for y de la palabra since? Para y por, desde. Para y desde. Por, para y desde. Sí. Yes. Someone else? ¿Alguien más que tenga otra traducción diferente? Por. Por. Okay, in this case, when you are translating for, les aparece para, ¿verdad? Pero también les aparece otra traducción, les aparece en. Y cuando traducen el since, o sea, de manera literal, les dice en, ya que, puesto que, algo por el estilo. Pero concordamos en que les aparece que se traduce de maneras similares. En, en. Y Vamos a ver por qué tienen traducciones similares, pero al, al, al mismo tiempo son diferentes. Uh -huh, muy bien. En este caso, vamos a enfocarnos en for, en since, for time, para hablar de tiempo. En este caso, ese es el, el, el focus que le estamos dando a for and since. And we are going to make the difference between these two words and in which cases we are going to use every of these words, in which cases we are going to use for, in which cases we are going to use since. We have two examples here. Vamos a comenzar con dos ejemplos. Number one, in this case we have, we live there for five years. We live there for five years. And we have another example, but in this case is with since. He has been away since Tuesday. Ahora, ¿cómo podemos traducir esas dos oraciones? Por ejemplo, la primera. ¿Cómo nos quedaría la traducción de we live there for five years? Nosotros vivimos ahí por cinco años. Ajá, vivimos ahí por cinco años. Y la otra, he has been away since Tuesday. Hemos estado lejos desde el jueves. Ah, hemos estado lejos desde el jueves. Desde martes. El martes. Martes, excuse me, martes. Exactamente, desde el martes. <ríe> I'm sorry. Don't worry. Thank you. Thank you, Nazario. It's, um, it's normal because... You're welcome. It, tiene sus, sus eh, similitudes, por eso a veces nos, nos confundimos, but that's okay. Lleva o lle, él lleva fuera o, o ha estado lejos desde el martes. Cuando hacemos esas traducciones, vemos que son diferentes. Vivimos ahí por cinco años. Un... Eh, Estamos hablando de tal vez uh, la estadía, ¿verdad? De, de cuánto tiempo. Y el otro dice, ha estado lejos desde, nos muestra desde qué, desde qué momento tal vez ha estado lejos. O sea, to, en qué momento empezó esa situación. He has been away since Tuesday and we lived there for five years. Vivimos ahí por periodo de tiempo. Ponemos desde cuándo, ¿verdad? ¿Cuánto tiempo pasó? Y el otro, ¿desde cuándo ha empezado a suceder esa situación? Now, we have these examples, but now we are going to explain the use of since and for. So, in this case, it says that we are going to use, um, or we often use for and since when we are uh, talking about time. And in this case, the number one, for, Plus period. 
And it says that a period is a duration of time. El periodo es la duración del tiempo. Puede ser five minutes, two weeks, six years. Esto significa que desde el principio de ese periodo hasta el final de ese periodo. Quiere decir que el for lo estamos utilizando cuando ya hay un periodo que empezó y se completó. O sea, tenemos un espacio donde ya se completó esa, ese, ese espacio de tiempo, esa, um, ese, ese momento. Por ejemplo, podemos decir, I was studying English uh, for five years. Estuve estudiando inglés por cinco años. Empecé hace cinco años atrás, puede ser en enero, febrero, marzo, abril, whatever month it is, y terminé cinco años en este periodo de tiempo. Puede ser ayer se me cumplieron los cinco años, pero ese periodo, esa duración ya está completa. O sea, yo hablo de inicio y final de ese tiempo. Uh -huh, it is more specific because in this case you are talking about a, a moment, a specific moment in time. Now, in the number two, we have scenes plus point. Aquí ya no es periodo, es punto, un point. A point is a precise moment in time. El punto es un momento preciso en el tiempo. Nine o'clock, first January, Monday, since means from a point in the past until now. En este es un punto específico en el tiempo. Puede ser específicamente a las nueve de la noche, a las nueve de la mañana, el primero de enero, eh, el lunes. El SINS significa desde un punto en el pasado hasta ahora. Aquí sí, especificamos con día, hora, fecha y todo. El otro es como un periodo de tiempo más extenso donde comienza y termina pero no sabemos exactamente, ¿verdad? Eh, ¿Cuándo, cómo y a qué horas? Y el science tiene que ver con puntos específicos. I was reading a book yesterday. Estaba leyendo un libro, ¿cuándo? Ayer. Yesterday is my point. Y ahí, así lo vamos a trabajar, ¿verdad? Poniéndoles fechas, horas, momentos específicos. El otro es como un bloque. Un bloque que te, empieza y termina y el otro sí nos va a especificar eh, con fechas y con datos específicos en el tiempo. Ajá, exactamente, como esto de la Coca-Cola. That is it says, since 1916, porque nos especifica desde cuándo fue que comenzó. Very good, very good. nine o'clock first January Monday
until now. Now we are going to see some examples in which we are going to see how to apply this information. Vamos a eh, ver ejemplos con for and conscience y vamos a ver cómo es que esto funciona, ¿verdad? Así como ponían el ejemplo de el funcionamiento, ¿verdad? De ciertas empresas que le ponen since y ponen el año, ¿verdad? Entonces, así vamos a ver estos ejemplos donde vemos el uso específico del tiempo. Pero lo vamos a hacer en una pequeña tabla para ponerlos uno al lado del otro. Acá. Vamos a empezar con... Eh, or that is a period from start to end. Y en este de acá, since there is a point from them to now. Okay, in this case, we're going to put some examples. Here we have for 20 minutes. Yes, it means Spanish. Um, in this case, we can use like boil for 20 minutes. Cuando tenemos la receta de cocina, Y nos dice, ah, tiene que hervirlo por 20 minutos. Ahí, el uso. For 20 minutes, es un periodo de tiempo. Um, leave the conditioner on the, uh, in, on the hair for 15 minutes. Dejarse el acondicionador por 15 minutos. Es un principio y un final. Obviamente ese periodo va a terminar. Then, for three days. Mm, it could be, it could be uh, uh, that kind of uh, statements. Uh, but these ones apply when, let me see. Yes, when we are like having no reference to time. It's like the first time, but not related to a specific time, but it is, it is part of the structure. Then we have the next one for three days. for six months. For four years. For a couple of years, it could be. For two centuries. for a long time, forever, y voy a agregar el que pusieron en el chat, for a couple of years. Okay. So in this one, that is a point, from then to now, we're going to change this one. We have since 9 a.m. I was waiting since 9 a.m. To, to the doctor, for example. Estuve esperando al doctor desde las 9 de la mañana. Eh, since Monday. Since January. Since 1997, since 2000, since I left school, since the beginning of time. It 
it don't have like a very specific information about the beginning of time, but we know that it's a long, long time ago. So in this case, we can use also these kind of expressions with the word since. And it says that uh, something very specific here. Let me see. In this case, for is like used in all tenses. Este lo podemos utilizar con todos los, los tiempos. Y este es más que todo para perfect tenses. Para todos los pasados perfecto, presente perfecto. Todos los que lleven perfecto, ¿verdad? En sus, en sus tiempos. Todas esas estructuras, más que todo, vamos a utilizar el since. Pero el for sí es para todos los, los, los tiempos, ¿verdad? Vamos a ver en cómo utilizar el for en different tenses. For, and we have here, it can be used with all tenses. And we are going to see the examples. We have here. They study for two hours every day. They study for two hours every day. They are studying for three hours today. They are studying for three hours. today. Next one. Um, he has lived in Bangkok for a long time. He has lived in Bangkok for a long time. He has been living in Paris for three months. I worked at a bank for five years. Will the universe continue forever? So in this case, we can see that we are using different um, structures, different tenses to uh, talk about time. Now, it says that we don't use for with all day or all the time. No utilizamos, cuando eh, tenemos las palabras all day y all the time, no vamos a utilizar el for. Simplemente vamos a poner, I was there all day. Estuvimos ahí todo el día. No vamos a poner, I was there for all day. Sino que es como muy redundante y no, no, es, no es correcto, ¿verdad? Entonces, cuando tenemos all day y all the time, no vamos a utilizar for. Now, we are going to see since that this one is normally used with perfect tenses. And we have the examples. Here. It says, he has been here since 9 a.m. He has been working since he arrived.
I have lived in New York since my childhood. And it says that we also use scenes with a specific structure. And the structure, it is, it is, y ponemos un periodo de tiempo, scenes. Cuando tenemos esta estructura, vamos a poner el scenes y nos quedaría más o menos de esta forma. Tenemos por acá, it was a year since I had seen her. It was a year since I had seen her. And how long it is since you got married? How long is it since you got married? So in those cases, we have this structure, the for and since. And in some cases, we can think that they are not important for the English language. But if you can see that when we are learning a new language, we need to focus also in the small things. Tenemos que enfocarnos también en las cosas pequeñas. Estas son palabras que a veces nosotros no le ponemos como mucha eh, importancia, sino que así como nos salió, así la vamos a decir y así la vamos a dejar. Y si me entendieron. Qué bueno. Pero a veces no es así, sino que tenemos que enfocarnos en cómo eh, nosotros lo aplicamos a las conversaciones. Ya vimos que el for se va a utilizar por periodo de tiempo de un principio y un final. Y el since con puntos específicos en el tiempo, desde cuándo hasta el presente. Entonces aquí tenemos algunos eh, ejemplos de cómo se aplican el for y el since en conversaciones, en uh, situaciones diarias, en las cuales nosotros pues podemos utilizar estas preguntas. También veíamos que el for se utiliza con todos los tiempos, con todos los tenses, y el since más que todo con los perfectos, con lo que lleven pues eh, la parte de perfecto en su eh, estructura. Pero también hay algunas oraciones en las que, pues, for and since have other meanings and they are not like referencing to time. And it is when you say, this is for you. Esto es para ti. Aquí no se refiere a tiempo, pero se utiliza también de esa forma el for y el since. Uh, is this the train for London? Este es el tren para Londres. Since you ask, I will say yes. Desde que preguntaste, yo voy a decir que sí. Since he didn't study, he didn't pass the exam. También se utilizan estas frases para otras situaciones que no siempre, no siempre tienen que ver con tiempo. So, it's time to end the session and we are almost, almost done. The time flies, yes. And if you can see, tomorrow is the last session. So, we are going to end the session here. Have a really good night and we are going to see each other on the last session of this module. So, goodbye. Thank you, teacher. Thanks to you. Good Have night, nice. thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. See you. See you.